Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, the audience who is uh, listening to us and who is watching us. Um, today, I would like to uh, welcome uh, our um, dear friend, um, Alipati mm. Trey. And uh, Alipati, <laughs> Bula Alipati, welcome to um, this uh, interview. How are you? Bulubinaka Enna, very well, thank you. Thank you for having me here today. It's our pleasure. So as I said earlier, we're gonna read, I'm gonna read your bio. You know, it's quite extensive, but I had to reduce it. <laughs> You've done so many things, okay? And then we can talk, yeah, and then we can talk about your, your bio. So Albert Ali Pate in Fijian Trail is an Oakland-based tutor and choreographer of Fijian Meke, that means dance and culture. Born and raised in Fiji and attesting his knowledge and skills in Fijian e Taukei culture to his Bubu Savaira, who is his grandmother. Alipati Trail has spent his life totally immersed in showcasing Fijian culture, history, and stories through the performing arts. Studying in Hawaii at the Bingham Young University in Political Science. Alipati refined and extended those skills with costuming, theater, and cultural presentation skills at the renowned Polynesian Center in Laie, Hawaii from January 2000 to June 2007. Back in New Zealand in 2007, Alipati established a Fijian cultural group named Kabu K or Kaladi, which performed at the Auckland Pacific Festival, the Rugby World Cup, Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs and many more places. Mm -hmm. In 2017, 2007, sorry, in 2016, 2017, Ali Pati was contracted by the Auckland War Memorial Museum to work as a key knowledge holder advisor for the Pacific Collections Access Project, PCAP. In 2020, Ali Pati featured in Pacific Dance New Zealand's Transform series as a Fijian dance choreographer. He is currently the director of the MANA Academy based at the Pacific Arts Center in Henderson. And his motto is honoring the past, preparing for the future. <laughs> so here you are, <laughs> dear audience. This is our guest for, for today. And please, Ali Pati, tell me more or would you please re reply to your bio, please? Uh, you know, it's always strange hearing uh, uh, a bio or accolade being read about yourself. Yeah, I think it's a Pacific Island thing where we don't like the spotlight on ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, yes, very uh, um, thank you for that introduction. Um, also, currently, right now, I am the uh, 2021 Pacific Dance New Zealand Artist in Residence. And uh, this is the final. Uh, second last week of a 11 week program that it began in July. And um, again, just doing the same thing, sharing our beautiful culture uh, in person uh, prior to lockdown. And of course, uh, in lockdown now, everything has gone online. And so uh, not only teaching and sharing with uh, our people here in uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand, but uh, also internationally via online as well. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> just one thing, I just wanted to ask you, if you think about it during our um, interview, how would you translate your motto, you know, honoring the past, preparing the future in Fiji? You can think about it later and you can tell me because I think that's quite important. Yes. Wow. What a novel. So <laughs> what I wanted to do, you know, is to ask you about your, uh, your own work obviously but before that going into your upbringing where you have learned your language Fijian language thanks thank you your boo boo i can see that your grandmother can you, can you please tell me more about it and maybe some of the words that you have learned from your grandmother sorry mm -hmm. grandmother that have stuck with you that you liked it those some Fijian important words oh um uh, and i think uh uh, one of the main words that stick out for me is vaka roko roko, which means to always show respect. I think from uh, her interactions with me when she would come in from the village to stay with us in the city, 
uh, she would always come and stay with me in uh, my room. And she only spoke Fiji and she spoke very, very minimal English. Uh, and when she did, I always used to laugh because it was always broken and so forth. But um, in the midst of uh, her coming in and me spending time with her each time she came in from the village, uh, I noticed as I look back over the years that I was, that's how I picked the language up because she only spoke Fijian and I was forced to, to try and understand and therefore start responding to her. And um, yeah, I, I think it just all stems from uh, uh, she, every night she was adamant about doing our prayers, doing our lotu or our uh, services on a daily basis. I thought it was tiring every day as a young person. Oh my goodness, here we go again. Uh, what was supposed to be a one minute uh, prayer turned into a half an hour lecture with a full sermon. And uh, I think I just learned uh, respect, yeah? Uh, that word vakarokoroko. And I think she's been the uh, main foundation in um, my knowledge and culture of uh, everything Fijian. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you to your grandmother. Now, I, I would like you, because you sent me two items, you know, that you use in dancing. So I'm going to share my screen with you and you can tell me more about uh, those, those items, okay? <laughs> so this is the first one that uh, you sent me. Can you, can you see it? Yes, yes. <laughs> and according to what you sent me is a iri, an iri yes. for fun. Can you please tell me a bit more about this? Why do you use it during the performances and uh, what is the significance of that? Yes, Vinaka Ena. So uh, this is one type of iri or fan that we have in Fiji. Of course, uh, as you can see from the makeup of it, uh, this fan is not ideal for cooling oneself down. This is a ceremonial dance fan. And so, of course, you have the normal fans that cool you down and we have many different styles and... Uh, and versions from the different provinces around Fiji. But this particular one is a ceremonial dance fan that uh, both the women and the men use. Uh, so women can use this in dancing. Uh, men can also use this as a single instrument uh, in uh, performing, or it can be accompanied with a spear as well. So the significance of this fan is to, I mean, not only to showcase the, the craftsmanship of Fijian uh, art, uh, and crafts, of course. Uh, in the old days, of course, these fans were much, much larger. And I, I hear and uh, I've heard and uh, also read from studies also and talking with some of the old folks that these fans were also used on a, of course, they were made larger, but they were also used as some sort of deflector shield on the field, uh, as also we had uh, bows and arrows in Fiji as well. So these particular things were were good in actually deflecting these arrows or whatever was being thrown or hurled at you uh, in a field of battle. Uh, could have been a throwing club, could have been rocks, but uh, mainly I hear that uh, spear, um, arrowheads, uh, these things were good. Of course, they would have to be a lot bigger, mm -hmm. but these are uh, what we use nowadays. They've been reduced in size uh, to accompany the performing arts. Yeah, Can of course, because we don't go to war anymore. So. The war now is on the dance field when we're performing. Yeah. Can you just one thing? Can you just remind me what kind of material you use for this? You know, I can see the kind of that looks like the um, the fun itself. But what kind of material do you use for for that? Perfect. So the uh, the brown leaf uh, forms that you see in the middle section of the fan that is the pandanus uh, or lau hala. It's called in other parts of the Pacific. Uh, in the middle, midriff of the fan, that'll be a bamboo that's been uh, woven as well. You've got uh, it covered in a weave with uh, using pandanus as well. Uh, the, uh, the, the teardrop uh, looking shape there in the middle of the fan, that's the midriff of the coconut leaf that's been uh, used as a backbone to give it structure and stability on the outer edges. And the very top of the fan, you'll see like a tassel like thing. Yep. That's uh, those are fibers of the wild hibiscus plant. Okay, so there are quite a lot of materials in there. Um, the yes. second, mm -hmm. thank you very much for this. And the second one I would like us to to talk about because you sent me the um, this yes. one here, yeah. And yes. uh, you you said that if this is for the sound. You know, you hit and the kind of uh, slit. Um, 
or blanc um, material there. Can you just tell me more about this, please, Alipati? Yes, sure. So this is just one uh, one form of lali. Of course, this is a small one, which we use to keep our basic rhythm in a meke or a dance, yeah? Uh, of course, there's many, many sizes. Some can go up to the size of a, a kanuhao uh, in the old days because of uh, that's used for sending long distance messages to warn the people to gather. Uh, there's a meeting in the village, the chief has arrived, or well, there's a battle ensuing on the horizon. We need to get ready. Uh, but this smaller version, this is one of the styles. Uh, there's a different style, of course, that's used. Uh, different parts of Fiji have their varying styles. Yeah, so this is just a small lali to accompany our dance. Okay. And just one question, what's the name of the, what, what material or what good would you usually use for, for, for this uh, mm. For this lali? So in uh, Fiji, of course, uh, Fiji was known for its abundance in hardwoods, uh, hence what brought the Tongans and the Samoans trading to bring in their fine mats and tapa cloth to Fiji to trade for our hardwoods uh, with the canoes and the lalis. This one here would be called the Vesi wood, V-E-S-I, oh. and it's a type of uh, Fijian ironwood. Okay. That's excellent. That's a very good. I'll, I'll stop sharing this and uh, we can go back on to talking about, you know, how. Well, first of all, thank you very much for giving us um, the information because obviously I'm sure the audience will want to know, to know a bit more about our mm -hmm. uh, the uh, material that's been used in, um, in, in this instance. Now, the second thing I would like to talk to you, and I think this is the real, the real topic, you know, that uh, I think is quite important when we talk about language, you know, how do we use language? And I, I do see that um, some of the things that uh, you play, uh, you, you, the, the dance are performed by the group of children because you're most focused on children. And I'm mm -hmm. just wondering you know, how do you help them in understanding to dance, but also, I guess, singing is one of the ways to use the language to maintain it as, you know, although it's, it's small, but it, it does a lot of good to the culture itself. Naka mm. Ena, yes, uh, as uh, everyone may be aware, of course, throughout the Pacific, we didn't have uh, a written uh, knowledge or history. So everything is passed on through the form of storytelling through chants, through singing, through dances. Uh, and so that's exactly what it is, how it is in Fiji as well. A lot of these old dances. So with the kids, I focus on traditional first. Uh, there's many, many groups out there that just grab a CD, pop it in and create actions. Yeah, and, and that's fine. That's more contemporary style. Uh, but for myself, I like to focus on traditional first, give them that foundation of knowing a little bit about tradition, then you feel free to experiment with, um, with contemporary. But uh, of course, in a, embedded in our traditional dances, these chants, some of these dances are as old as history itself. And um, contained in the words of these dances are wisdom that, that we hardly hear of nowadays, uh, telling stories of uh, certain concepts. And of course, uh, embedded in these dance, of course, and the chants, um, the children are learning wakarokoroko, um, respect. They learn about wakatu, which is their identity. Uh, they learn about tole solevaki, which is the Fijian concept of working together for the general good of everyone. There's no individualistic approach such as me, myself, and I, how can I achieve or how can I gain? It's about what's good for everybody in general, yeah? Sole Solevaki, very, very strong Fijian attribute that was uh, very active in the old days, still active today, but again, with the onslaught of modern day living and Western lifestyle, we're forgetting about all of these things. Yeah, we're focusing on ourselves more. Um, in the dances, the kids learn about vakayalo or spirituality. Um, for In order for the, the Ndauni Vudu or the dance teacher to teach, there must be silence. That's actually a Fijian value, which is called Waka Nomondi, in order for, that's our highest form of respect is showing silence. Uh -huh. um, and of course, in uh, the other two main concepts that are embedded uh, in these traditional dances 
is learning about Vewe Kani or their relationship to other Vanua or other tribes and villages that they can be related to. And of course, when you perform traditional mekes, there must be ceremonies that uh, are, are performed or accorded to the group after the dance, as we present our first presentation of the dance, there's, uh, if we follow the protocol to the exact T, there must be a, a tambour or whale's tooth presented, there must be kava or yangona, and there must be a feast after to celebrate, to, to round it off properly. Yeah? So there's so many concepts that are embedded, and this is the way the children uh, get a little taste of each of these as we get them involved in it. Oh, this is quite this is excellent, you know, all of those concepts, those mm -hmm. ideas that you're sharing. And I guess, you know, mm -hmm. the ceremonial part of it, you know, the protocol, the ritual is quite important for the children, I guess, to get, as I say, into the mood of, you know, performing mm -hmm. for, the, for, for the public or for themselves to grow up, to grow into their own culture. So thank you for that. What I'm going to do now, you send me the, the Meke Wesi. We're going to have a yes. look at it because that's the kind of dance you said, you know, the spear, spear yeah. dance, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I was just interested in, in the, uh, the kids, the children dancing. And what I was um, surprised to see, or well, well <laughs> that's a good surprise, that the color, the color of those costumes, you know, it's always been a bit of Polynesian. Uh, if you want a uh, attire where colors have got a, a, um, a kind of is it a place in our culture, yeah. would, you, would you say that's uh, yeah. how you would read as well? Yes, very much. Uh, if you see the girls' costumes as well, when you see brown tapa or yellow, you know that that's a, a, a signal of uh, chiefly or noble rank. So these are children of people who have. Uh, High ranking in Fijian society. Okay, so I think we can share then. If, how about this one? This is uh, what we oh, yeah. here. Yes, yes, yeah. So these are the girls, and they have their kind of traditional costumes. And they, did yeah. you do? Did you make the costume? Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, three of those are uh, their own personal ones, but the the rest of the group that's made by myself and my team. Yes, definitely. Oh, that's. that's <laughs> That's a, that must have been a, a, a long and uh, arduous job to prepare all this. Well, I tell you, eh, trying to find the time to do that nowadays. But, uh, you know, the end result is always worth the hard work. Uh, when you see the kids out there all looking beautiful and uh, you see the pride that uh, swells from them, yeah, and their parents who are also very proud of them for being involved, uh, it just makes it all worth the hard work. <laughs> I'm going to stop the sharing. Um, one of the things that to, as I think we, 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 we have touched uh, on it as well, and uh, it might be more personal. It's just, I'm just looking at you and how you in your house household, how do you teach your children? How do you make them talk to you? I know sometimes, you know, I was talking, as you know, I was talking to Darren and sometimes through prayer, prayers, you know, or when they, when they go for a walk, they talk about some Fijian you know, concept, not concept, but ideas, you know, to run, to walk. So, you know, how do you in your household, because it must be difficult to be in a country where most of the people speak English. So how do you practice your, uh, your language? So, um, you know, I just go, the two main things I do is um, basic instruction, you know? I'll say to Lani, Lani, kota maina masimas, Lani, please bring me the salt. She'll stop for a second and then she'll think, oh, okay. Uh, you know, so at first, well, of course, when they were a lot younger, they just used to laugh at me, think, oh, daddy, you sound silly. What are you speaking? <laughs> and then uh, as we got, as they're getting older now, I think it's starting to, to stick because they've been exposed to it multiple times. And I think as um, parents who can, sometimes we can give up too easy, yeah? Because it's like, Oh, they're never going to get it. Uh, and I think that's where we need to be strong and keep going. Because if we repeat it and surround them enough, eventually they will start to respond. That's what happened to me with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. At first, I, I didn't really understand what she was saying. Uh, and I was, you know, I would have been, what, seven or eight, uh, eight years old. Uh, but then over time, coming right by the end of high school, 
I was a fluent speaker of Fijian because she just kept speaking to me. And then I started to take a loving to the music. And so I, when I get a chance, when I'm cleaning around the house or doing something, I can't do it in silence. So I'll go and put on the stereo and put on some uh, Fijian music there. When we're in the car, I've got the volume cranked up on loud. <laughs> yeah, and so it's it's constantly they've been bombarded with music and and basic words. Yeah, and I think that's uh, probably the best way to do it. And we can't expect them to speak it overnight. Mm. Uh, we have to think of this as a, a lifetime process. So by the time they're young adults, they should be able to speak uh, Fijian in a in a fluent manner or even understand. Yeah, so. Hopefully, that's the end goal. <laughs> so I, I suspect, or I, uh, I'm sure your children are also dancers and performers, aren't they? Oh, yes, they have no choice. They're always in the front. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this is very, very good. And I know one of the things I want, like, I just one of the last questions is that, you know, where do you rate dance, you know, as an art, you know, in terms of, language learning or language where, where do you put dance is it the same thing as i don't know poems like our friend <laughs> dear friend uh, darren or do you put it as the same thing as mm -hmm. music because you know they come together where do you rate the mm -hmm. the idea of dance as a tool to maintain our language um, well our language yeah i think uh just like uh, other mediums in our culture, you know, there's the reading, there's the spoken word. Uh, some people learn the language by going to church, by going to a church that speaks only Fijian and conducts. Uh, but I find myself, uh, I have the most, I had the most joy and the most fun out of dancing. And uh, with the dance, it immediately brought me out of my uh, really shy, I used to be a very shy person as a young man. Uh, but the dancing had forced me to open up because I was there in front of people and interacting and learning. So I think for the kids nowadays, the generation nowadays, their attention span is like <laughs> this, you know? <laughs> and so we have to have uh, uh, something, approach them in a, with something that's really fun mm -hmm. and, uh, and that'll keep them engaged. Yeah? So I think performing arts is, uh, is one of the good ways. There's many other ways. But for myself, I've found that performing arts is an excellent way to get the kids to um, open up and to come out of the shell and embrace the culture in a fun way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you, my friend. This is, this is such an interesting um, talk with you. And I'm so pleased that, uh, you know, you're sharing your belief and you're sharing your voice, you know, to for the Language Week, for Fijian Language Week. So... This is yes, it has been very amazing for me, and I hope the, uh, the audience and the public are enjoying this this discussion. So, uh, can I just ask you, you know, to finish off, to to say something in um, in Fijian, maybe a prayer, maybe whatever you want to say in Fijian, and, and then we can wrap this up, please. Sure. Vena sarva levo ena na nomni vesureti mai na singa ni kua auvia. Uh, wasiaga na nongu na nongu ivaka sama membaleta na nonda vosa na vosa vaka viti menda kaku ni alai lai e na zaka zaka ni vei vanganga ataki vei na luvenda uh, menda tosto na visi na valai lai uh, se vaka levo a uh, vata unga vei ko e vena kanga me e me vala mm -hmm. ento na ka kuanga ni datu kuna menda ngai vala tanga ni mataka menda kuni wele e menda yan raba uh, <laughs> Can you just uh, tell me a, a summary of what you said, please, in English? So I said uh, to all of our uh, listeners out there, uh, you know, don't have little or small spirits about the work. I know sometimes it can be overwhelming to try and uh, constantly teach our language and our culture, uh, but just take baby steps each day. To, uh, to do something about it. Eventually you will get there. Uh, just keep up the faith and the hard work and um, keep moving forward. Well, once more, Bulawindaka, my dear friend, and hopefully you will send me the uh, translation, honoring the past and preparing for the future, please. So I will. here you are, audience, we have finished. And uh, thank you once more, uh, Ali Pati.